Welcome to Satu Karyu 2.0 online nursing channel. In today's video, we are going to study important questions for AIMS NASA 2024-25 exams. So this question challenge round have 10 questions and try to answer all the 10 questions. Each question will have two marks. If you tell the answer correctly for one question, you will get two marks totally. You will get 20 marks at the end of this video. So let's go to the first question of the day. During suction, the patient complains of respiratory distress. The first nursing action should be option A, immediately remove suction catheter. Option B, suction rapidly in 5 seconds and remove the catheter. Option C, call senior nurse. Option D, call doctor immediately. So while giving suctioning, when the patient have respiratory distress, the immediate action the nurse should do is to remove the suction catheter. You see the rationale here, the first nursing action when a patient complains of respiratory distress during suctioning is to stop the suctioning immediately to prevent further respiratory compromise. Also assess the patient's airway, provide supplemental oxygen if needed. And monitor the vital signs. It is important to ensure the patient's safety and comfort while giving suctioning to the patient. Now move on to second question in this video. A patient is having calcium level of 7 mg per deciliter. Identify the ECG changes seen in this patient. Option A, T wave inversion. Option B, prolonged QT interval. Option C, prominent T wave. Option D, P U wave. So when calcium level for a patient is of 7 mg per deciliter, the ECG changes will be option B, prolonged Q interval is noted. The rational here. So let's see the explanation here. A calcium level of 7 mg per deciliter indicates hypocalcemia, which can lead to specific ACT changes. The most common changes seen in hypocalcemia include prolongation of the QT interval. It is a characteristic of Clausius sign and Chaustic sign, which may further impact cardiac rhythm. So now let's move on to question number three. So it's an image-based question. Identify the FIO to rate in the given venturi mass. Option A, 40%. Option B, 31%. Option C, 60%. Option D, 28%. The FIO2 rate given through red color venturi mark will be the right answer is option C 60 percentage. Let's say the rational FIO2 indicates the fraction of inspired oxygen rate administered through a red color venturi mask is typically 60 percentage. So this is because the red Venturi mask is designed to deliver high flows of oxygen, which can effectively increase the oxygen concentration available to the patient. Now, move on to question number four. A patient has vitals, the blood pressure of 120 by 66 millimeter of mercury, pulse 88 beats per minute. SPO2 level of 99% and respiratory rate of 23. This patient should be classified in which fridge? Option A, red. Option B, green. C, yellow. And D, black. So with this parameter, the patient 
must be kept in the fridge? The right answer is option B, green color. All these parameters are looks normal. So the green color fridge will be applied for this particular patient. Now move on to question number five. Identify the abnormality seen in this patient. The pH level is 7.25. The PCO2 level at 40, the bicarbonate level is 22, the sodium level is 150, and chloride level is 100. So the patient will have which type of abnormality? Option A, metabolic acidosis. Option B, respiratory acidosis. Option C, metabolic alkalosis. Option D, respiratory alkalosis. So, the patient with the following parameters will have option A, metabolic acidosis. The rational is here. The patient's arterial blood gas values indicate acidosis with a pH of 7.25, which is below the normal of 7.35 to 7.45. The PCO2 is within the normal range between 35 to 45 millimeter of mercury, suggesting that the acidosis is not respiratory in origin. The bicarbonate level is also within the normal range of 22 to 26 milli equivalent per liter, which rules out metabolic compensation. Given these values, the likely abnormality is compensator metabolic acidosis. The elevated sodium level at 150 milliequivalent per liter and normal chloride level of 100 milliequivalent per liter do not directly contribute to the acid base imbalance, but may indicate other underlying conditions that need to be addressed. So, I hope you are clear now. We will go to the sixth question in this video. According to ABC, airway breathing circulation, which of the following describes improper cardiac circulation? Option A, hypotension. B, tachypnea. Option C, diminished pulse. And option D, CRT rate less than 3 seconds. CRT of less than 3 seconds. So, during in the context of ABC, the improper cardiac circulation occurs due to the right answer option B, diminished pulse. Let's say the rational for this. Improper cardiac circulation can refer to several issues such as insufficient blood flow due to block arteries, heart wall problems, impacting the blood flow or heart rhythm disorders leading to ineffective pumping of blood. This can result in conditions like heart failure or ischemia. Trans illumination procedure is done with A. Angiography, B. Blood culture, C. Venipuncture, Option D. Bone marrow aspiration. The trans illumination procedure is done for option C. Many puncture is right answer. What is trans illumination procedure? It is a technique used to locate the veins, particularly in patients with difficult venous success. It involves using a light source, usually a handheld trans illuminator. To eliminate the area where vein puncture is to be performed, the light makes the veins more visible under the skin, assisting healthcare providers in finding a suitable vein for venous access. So, I hope you are clear why and how this trans illumination procedure is done. Move on to question number. Eight. A patient has a temperature of 103 degrees Fahrenheit, heart rate of 110 beats per minute, 
respiratory rate of 23 breaths per minute, BP of 132 by 66 millimeter of mercury. Which factor you will primarily manage in this patient? Option A, temperature 103 degrees Fahrenheit. Option B, respiratory rate of 23 breaths per minute. Option C, heart rate of 110 beats per minute. Option D, blood pressure of 132 by 66 millimeter of mercury. So the most abnormal parameter here is temperature. Option A has to be managed as the primary concern with the primary concern. The Right answer is temperature, option A, and let's see the rational here. Given the patient elevated temperature of 103 degrees Fahrenheit indicating the fever, along with a rapid heart rate of 110 per minute and increased respiratory rate of 23 breath per minute, the primary factor to manage would be the fever. Addressing the fever may help elevate the other symptoms like tachycardia and tachypnea and improve the patient's overall condition. So, it is essential for a nurse to monitor the patient's vital sign closely and consider further evaluation to determine the underlying cause of fever. Move on to question number. The next question, nine. The ninth question is, the earliest symptom of hyponatremia is option A, thirst, option B, fatigue, option C, ataxia, option D, weakness. The earliest symptom of hyponatremia is the right answer, option C, fatigue. Let's see the rational here. The earliest symptom of hyponatremia is often a non-specific and may include headache, nausea, and malaise. A sodium level continues to decrease. Symptoms can progress to more severe neurological issues such as confusion, seizures, or even coma. It's essential to monitor and assess the symptoms closely and seek medical guidance if hyponatremia is suspected. So I hope you got the explanation for this question. Now the last question in this video, complication of high flow of ventilation. Option A, aspiration, B, pneumothorax, option C, diaphragmatic hernia, option D, COPD, the complication of High flow of ventilation is the right answer. The right answer is pneumothorax. Option B is right. Let's see the rational here, the explanation. High flow ventilation can lead to several complications, including airway inquiry due to excessive pressure, barotrauma during Barotrauma, lung inflation, decreased venous return, and potential ventilation perfusion mismatch. Prolonged use can also lead to respiratory muscle fatigue and increased work of breathing. So, I hope you understood the explanation for the 10th question. So, here we come to the end of this video. We have seen 10 important questions for AIMS NASAC. Please subscribe to our channel, Satu Carry 2.0 Online Nursing Channel. And I request you to kindly subscribe the channel and comment about this video. And this is the end of the first round. In the second round, we will see another 10 important questions for AIMS NASAC exam 2024-25. So, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Meet you again with another 10 important questions.